and I'm AD and this is Tank. So I told my dad that we were filming this, he asked for my pet fish to be in it and this is Tank Sinatra. So Let's Tank say hi. Yeah. So Tank will be uh, with us every episode from now on. So, and what are we talking about today? So this week's topics were the Cardinal Pearl sentencing and the Instagram shutdown. So our heavy topic and our lighthearted topic. Yes. So we put our posters around, which you can see that we've pinned up some of these behind us. Um, so they're Lots around, yes, good. people were very interested, which I don't blame them because we do have a lot to talk about. So yeah. let's get started. What can we start with? So I think we start off with the Cardinal Pearl one. Yes. So Cardinal Pearl was a 77 year old man and in the face of the Catholic Church, he sits just below the Pope. Um, yeah, so he's got a bit of a big job. He does. Yes. So he was quite important in the hierarchy of it all. Cardinal Pell was charged with one charge of sexual penetration of a child under 16 years and four charges of indecent act with or in the presence of a child under 16 years. And for these five charges, he received six years imprisonment with a non-parole period of three years and eight months in prison. So we posed the question and people gave their opinion on this sentencing. Yeah, so to begin with, I found this quote on one of our posters extremely interesting. Um, it just obviously came from someone else. Um, their opinion was, I feel like the discussion was short-lived. Um, it should be talked about more because it seems like they're trying to protect his persona. Um, and with that, I think they're also trying to protect him because of his power mm -hmm. and of his power, of his MP powers as well. So yes. Yeah, someone did also mention that. Yes, they did. They said he had a free pass because of his MP powers and his power. So that was because um, John um, Howard was one of his character statements. Yeah. One of ten of them. And obviously he's quite high in power as well. So it was that whole power versus power versus the law, which is why this case has been so interesting. Yeah. Um, but then we've also got opinion of someone else who said that they're amazed by how he was convicted on the testimony of one person with no other evidence. And it was mainly because of the police and the prosecutor's guilt of having failed to act in the past on institutional practices. So we've got the whole Me Too Act going around yes. at the moment as well. Yep. So I feel like they've um, really jumped on this hard because they've kind of let other things slip through. Um, yeah. So it's more of a statement case is yeah. what this person said. Like, yeah, we've just like, don't worry, we've got you guys kind of thing because we kind of shared <coughs> over you the uh, past years mm. in like some cases. Yeah. The most common thing that people said um, was definitely that it was way too light of a sentence. And I think that leads into another few statements that were written on these posters saying that Cardinal Pearl was the prime um, case for capital punishment in Australia. Um, we had a few of those saying that, which I thought was very interesting. One person did say you can't ruin a child's life and get away with it, um, which I personally agree with. Yeah, I also read in an article that because it was obviously two boys in the presence of him, mm -hmm. one in 2014 did die of a um, heroin overdose, unfortunately, and his father was at the um, in the hearing yep. um, and said, this is what ruins families. Mm -hmm. Like, it has affected them for so long. Um, he really kind of just ruined their, their lives. So, it yeah. does make you wonder if he has died of heroin overdose. Um, because, if that comes into play, yeah, if that's it, what it does. It, it is that whole. Makes you think. Yes, mm. that's exactly right. So, yeah, um, I think that's it. It did become a very much his word, I their word. It, yeah. yeah. So that was another interesting factor of the case for sure. Yeah. Now, what else have people said? So I've got one here about the media's perspective. Yes. And how that, um, and how the media can radicalize the public opinion on Cardinal Pell's sentence without knowing um, the full facts of the case. Yes. Obviously. Um, because we're not there, we're not lawyers, <laughs> yes. um, and the argument of the prosecution and defence, mm. and the judge's reasoning, as it is irresponsible and ill-informed ill to make a judgement on the sentence, because we really have no information on what we've been told from the media. That's, so yes. The media doesn't give us everything that we want to hear, because mm. they sometimes can't, yep. or they don't want to. Yep. Um, so we, yeah, they think that for us... Um, should be more reasoned. Yeah, should we, mm. you know, look into it a bit more before we give our, yeah. our, our, our ideas. And I think that is that whole fact that there was a lack of evidence within yeah. the whole case. Um, and we didn't know much about the case, but we mm -hmm. did pull a great quote that someone referred to um, on one of the posters yes. that his uh, Cardinal Pell's lawyer 
stated. So the person wrote on the poster was they shortened it to vanilla rape. So the actual quote was, um, his lawyer referred to it as vanilla rape. So that's what it said on the poster. Um, so there was an article from The Guardian. So Robert Richter, his lawyer, said that there was no aggravating circumstances and it was no more than plain vanilla sexual penetration of a child under 16. So I think that that is why a lot of people are very angry. Yeah. Um, that's probably why the media is angry as well. Yeah. I don't think this case was handled great. I think the, um, the fact that the media couldn't report on it for so long, which is another part another of this. Part, yeah. uh, Australian media could not report on this for until his sentence. Because of the finished. size of the case and the yep. person that was involved, obviously. Yep. In the media, they didn't want any reporting in Australia because it would affect the jury. Yeah. So there were, I think that's another, there was just a lot of anger around yeah. this case and it was little thing, little thing, little thing. And then obviously <laughs> about a big thing Yeah. Um, that really affected this all. Um, so another quote that we put up, well, another opinion that we put off one of the posters that someone said that um, it sets a bad example because the crime is still just as illegal as it should be, even if someone in power committed it. Um, I think that's, yeah, it's so true. No matter who you are or, you know, what you do in our society or in the world, you shouldn't be um, given less of a sentence for anything. Yeah, shouldn't um, be above the law. Yeah, definitely shouldn't be above the law. And I think we'll finish off with this quote, which I think could lead into another thing we might talk about in another episode. Um, Pell will spend less time in prison than some refugees on Nauru have, which I think is very interesting. Mm. So we might leave that Cardinal Pell case there. <laughs> All right. On to the Instagram shutdown. So that was our lighthearted topic for the week. We asked people what... Oh, no, sorry. What their thoughts were. Yeah, so we asked people, how did you react to Instagram's temporary shutdown? So, on the 13th of March, Instagram had a three hour shutdown. So, we asked people what they thought, and this is what they gave us. It was intense, guys. We had several penises drawn on the posters. Several boobies. sets of boobs. Lots of boobs, <laughs> Lots actually. Lots of boobs. Um, a lot of sarcasm. No one cared. A lot of people tagged their Instagram, but there was actually probably one nice one. I like this one. Yes, it is yeah, a nice one. Nice. It's probably the only nice one on there was that they <laughs> took time to focus on their actual life. And whoever you are, <laughs> good I'm on so you. glad you did. Good on you. I'm glad you did. For that three hours. Um, a lot of people went to Facebook as well. Realised that that didn't work because Instagram and Facebook okay. are just one big old family. And then went to Twitter. Yes, love Twitter. That was where it was at. Um, so we thought we'd pull up a few influencers, very popular quotes. Well, so, not very popular. Let's we'll start with. Uh, Cole Carrigan, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if anyone knows him, but he's a famous makeup artist that's worked with Jeffree Star. Yeah. Um, he said, my dad literally just called me to see if I'm okay because I haven't posted all day, LMFAO. Fair enough. He's um, alive. Yeah. He's alive. <laughs> yeah, can confirm. Can confirm. Classic Tiara, which, who is a very new and upcoming drag queen. Love her. Me too. She said, Instagram is still down, my career is over. So I'm basically right. Classic Tiara. So, and then Gabrielle Zamora said as well, I wonder what all the Instagram models are doing on their day off. And Jeffree Star answered that question actually what with his say? tweet. I love that Instagram is down. More time to suck <laughs> and blend my eyeshadow. And I think that's all for the soapbox today. Thank you for joining yes, us. Yes, thank you guys. Um, so next time we'll be asking about the New Zealand shooting um, yes. and the change of opinion on terrorism. And the world famous... Egg Boy! Which we're all very excited to post about. Subscribe, follow our Twitters, that's where we post everything and all the questions and stuff. Yes. Um, where they're located. So, see you next time. Get on your soapbox.